Hey class, today we're going to be talking about Cluster 4, Lesson 2, which is called Line of Best Fit. Now with this lesson, it's going to be kind of tied in with some things that we already learned before, but it's also some new stuff because this is going to be mixed in with scatter plots. So let's move on to our next slide and we're going to talk about Line of Best Fit. So the Line of Best Fit is a straight line that represents the trend of the data in a, on a scatter plot. Okay, so it's basically like we have a whole bunch of scatter points and we have a straight line going through that data. All right, and it should go through the center of the data. Now, when drawing a line of best fit, you're going to try to have as many points on one side of the line as you would have on the other. Same concept goes for I need to have the same amount of points above as I have below or as close to it as possible. Okay. So when you're drawing the line of best fit, I'm going to say it again. You're going to try to have as many points above the line as you have below the line. And you're going to try to get that as close as possible. Now, not every time will you be able to have the even amount of points above and below, but you're going to try to get as close as possible. And we have to remember that a line of best fit is used to predict the outcomes that are not found in the data. Okay, so a lot of this is going to be predictions or estimations, and we're going to get answers that are very close to what we consider to be the true answer. So just remember, it is a prediction. Okay, so it may not be exactly what it is on from the work that you do, but the answer choices are going to be very close. Okay, so as we move forward, we're going to look at a couple of examples. In this first example, it says there are four scatter plots with the trend line are shown. It says which scatter plot shows the trend that is the best fit for the given data. So what we have to remember when we look at examples like this, um, we're looking to see which one fits the data the best. Meaning, remember, it's a straight line that has to go through the center and it has to be somewhat even above and below the line. Okay. So if we look at this data, if we look at answer choice A and answer choice A, those points are kind of like nowhere near the line. The data is going in this direction where the line of best fit is going in the opposite direction. Okay. And answer choice B, if you notice that all the points are on one side of the actual graph, because all my data points are up here, that's not trying to get it even on both sides so answer choice b i will say no okay so the next one what we can see in this answer choice for c okay we got a good amount on this side okay and then we have a good amount on this side also it looks like it could be an even split all right so before i make my final decision let's look at answer choice d and answer choice d with this one, it really don't even show a trend. The data points are kind of spread it all over the place. So it don't really show if it's going up or down because it's just like a splatter of dots. Okay, so I will say my best answer that fits the trend of the line that they gave me would be answer choice C because it's sitting in the middle of the data and it has a good amount of points on both sides of my line. Okay, so I'm going to erase that that I drew so that you can see it. So it's sitting dead center of my data and it's showing the trend of the line. Okay, so let's move to our next example. So in this example, it says the equation C is equal to 5.5B plus 88. It represents the relationship between the carbohydrates, which is the B, and the calories, which is C, for some foods. What is the meaning of the slope? So in order to answer this question, we're going to look at our equation first. Okay, we're going to break that equation apart. So we have C equals 5.5B plus 88. Now, in our equation, what we're used to, though, is going to be Y equals MX plus B. Even though they did not use the M or X or Y that we're used to, it's similar. So my M, we remember M is slope. So our M in this one is 5.5. Our B is going to be 88. And the question we want us to focus on just a slope. Okay, so we're really focused on just a slope. So what do that slope mean? So answer choice A says that there's a number of calories increased by 5.5 each time 
a carbohydrate is added. B says it's the number of calories increased by 88 each time a carbohydrate is added. It says that the total number of calories is 93.5. And it says that most foods start with 88 calories. All right, so because we're only focusing on the slope, we know the slope is a change. Okay, so that means in my book, even though answer choice D is correct, that most food starts with 88 calories, but 88 is our y-intercept. They didn't ask us for that. So 88 is not what we're looking for, nor is it for answer choice B because that's my y-intercept. The 93.5 is the total. Now, the way they got 93.5 is what they did was they took and added 5.5 and 88 together and they got 93.5. That's not, that's not what they asked us to do. So we're going to mark that one out. So the only answer choice they wanted us to find the meaning of was B A. Is that 5.5 is each time that a carbohydrate is added. Okay, so let's continue with our examples. It says Antonio collected data on an airline flight. It says the equation for, for his uh, set of data is M equals 1,754 minus 550 H, where M represents the distance a plane is from the destination and H represents the time in hours. What is the meaning of the y-intercept? So we're going to go and look at it again. So this equation gave us M is equal to 1,754 minus 550 H. Now, yet again, it's similar. So what's similar to us, the M is going to be our Y. This time, because it's not in order, there's no letter behind the 1,754. So that's going to be our B this time. And because the H is with the 550, that got to be our MX, okay? So we're going to sit and we're going to list our B, what that will be equal to, which is 1754. And our M is going to be negative 550, okay? So in this one, they wanted to know what is the meaning of the Y-intercept. Our Y-intercept is 1754. Okay, so let's look at our actual answer choices. It says it's the distance that the distance the plane traveled per hour. It's the distance the plane has traveled in one hour. It's the length of time the plane takes to reach its destination. It's the distance from the destination before the plane departs. Okay, so what we remember about y-intercept is our starting point it is our zero. Okay, so because it is our starting point, the y-intercept is considered to be our start point. That means in this answer choice, our best fit for this one will be is the point, it's the distance from which the destination before the plane departs. Okay, so that that's that example. So the y-intercept is basically like your start point. It's where it all begins. Okay, so it's basically your distance away, your furthest of distance away. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so for the next part of this lesson, we're going to write equations from the line of best fit. In order for us to write an equation from the line of best fit, sometimes the line will be drawn for us, and sometimes the line we have to draw for ourselves. So we have to remember how to draw, like we have to have equal amount of points above and below the line, and we'll go from there. And then once we draw the line, we're going to follow these four steps. And step one says that we're going to find the slope of the line of best fit by choosing any two points on the line. It is key to know that we have to choose points on the line, okay? Because, because we're dealing with scatter plots, we have data points all over the place. And with data points being all over the place, not all the time will those points be on the line of best fit. So that's something that we have to remember. Step two says that we need to find the y-intercept. And then step three says we're going to write the equation for the line of best fit using y equals mx plus b. And once we get that set up, we can use that equation to make predictions. And that's what's going to take place in this next example. Okay, in this example, we're going to use the four steps that you see off to the side. Okay, first thing we got to do, though, we have to draw the line of best fit. And remember that your line of best fit is going to have just about the same amount of points above it and below it. Then we're going to use the line of best fit. We're going to pick two points off that line, and we're going to find slope with that. After we find slope, we're going to use that to help us find our y-intercept. 
then we're going to write our equation in y equals mx plus b format and then we're going to use that equation to help us get the prediction that we need okay so looking at this problem it says joseph planted the same number of lettuce seeds in each row the scatter plot shows the number of heads of lettuce that grew based on the number of rows planted the question says about how many of the lettuce can Joseph expect if he plants 20 rows now one thing I do want to pinpoint in this is the key thing that they stated was about okay because they said about that means the answer that we're gonna get is gonna be close to one of the choices below okay but before we can start solving we have to have a line of best fit so I'm gonna use my ruler to kind of help me draw my line of best fit and remember we're going to try to get as the same amount of points above and below so in this case i got two above and then once i draw my line you'll see that i have three below that's still a perfect line of best fit because it's almost even okay all right so i'm going to draw my line of best fit once i get my line of best fit drawn now i have to pick two points on the line now the two points that I see are going to be let's see I see 12 and 250 so that's a point remember not necessarily will it be one of the dots it just have to be on the line so the first order pair that I can see physically is going to be 12 and 250 And the other one that I see pretty good, I'm, it's a guess. You're going to have to kind of guess with this a little bit. So I'm going to go with 6. And 6 is kind of halfway in between 100 and 150. So I'm going to guess that to be 6 and 125. Okay, so I'm going to use these two points. These two points are sitting dead center on my line of best fit. Okay, so I'm going to use these two points to help me find slope. So when I go from 6 to 12, that was an increase of 6. And when I went from 125 to 250, that was an increase of 125. So that gives me my slope as being 125 over 6. There's nothing that can go both into 125 and 6 to simplify it. So I'm going to leave it as 125 over 6. Okay, so I'm going to go now with y equals mx plus b. I'm going to pick my first y, which is 125. I'm going to pick my slope, which is 125 over 6. My x, which is 6 plus b okay so I'm gonna pull out my calculator and I'm gonna type in 125 divided by 6 times 6 what's that's gonna give me that's gonna give me 125 I bring my plus b down and my 125 comes down also then I'm gonna take and move that 125 to the other side by doing the opposite which is subtract that's gonna give me 0 is equal to b Okay, so now that I have my B and I have my slope, I can write my equation. My equation for this is going to be, change my color, Y equals 125 over 6, X plus 0, or you can just leave it with nothing behind it. But now the question asked me to make a prediction for 20 rows, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and plug it in. So I got 125 over 6 times 20 plus 0. Okay. Now, with that being said, I'm going to take and plug that into my calculator exactly the way I have it. So 125 divided by 6. And I'm going to hit times 20 plus 0. That's going to give me an answer of 416. Point six six and that keeps going okay so now let's look at our answer choices 
I have 300, I have 325, 400, and 425. Okay, so if I look at my, my answer choices, we know it's furthest away from 325, and 300 is not considered either, so it has to be 400 or 425. Now, I didn't get real close to 425, near that, nor did I go over it, but I did end up going over 400. So because I went over 400 and didn't touch 425 or go over it, I'm going to select 400 as my answer choice. Because remember, we're doing about how many hits. So this is a prediction for us. So I'm going to go with 400 as being my answer because I went over 400, but I didn't go over 425. So since I didn't go over 425, I'm not going to select that one. Okay, so for this question here, 400 will be the choice that I have. So this is how we're going to be solving in writing equations for a line of best fit. It's similar to a concept we've done prior. So the work part, we understand. The hardest part in this lesson is going to actually be drawing your line of best fit. Okay. You just got to remember, you're going to try to get your points, the same amount of points above and the same amount of points below. It can be one or two off above and below, but it's just the line that best fits the data that we can draw. Okay, so that concludes this lesson. Now you do have an extra example left from your handout, and we're going to cover that example in class. All right.